Hi, I'm Brian Sparks, Senior Editor of Greenhouse Grower. Welcome to our Shop Talk Tech Tip Series on GreenhouseGrower.com. This month, we are talking with insect control experts to learn more about the most challenging greenhouse pests, as well as how growers can identify and control them. We recently sat down with Dr. Gretchen Pettis with Biosafe Systems to learn more about cannabis aphids. Here's what she had to say. Even though aphids can be relatively easy to control, there are lots of factors that make them one of the most important pests of cannabis. Uh, one of those is because they're kind of cryptic. They're, they blend into the plant, they're underneath the leaf, so they can be hard to see. Um, and knowing what the signs and symptoms are that they're present, uh, once you're aware of those, they can be easier to see, but they can also be a little bit subtle until the populations have increased. the amount of control that you can achieve with quote unquote softer products like azadiractin or uh, the Entima pathogen Bavaria bassiana. So products like these that we typically think of as softer products can be as effective as more um, harsh synthetic chemistries. Uh, we're also learning that biological control is extremely compatible with these types of chemistries and can really help you out when you're producing a crop. So when you have aphid on your crop, um, one of the first symptoms people will often see is some stunting. So if you think about it, aphids are inserting their, their specialized straw-like mouth parts into the vascular tissue and sucking phloem. And phloem basically just carries all of those wonderful sugars and and nitrogen and photosynthates throughout the plant. So it's eating this sugary rich solution and taking it away from your plant. So the first thing you see is stunting. The next thing you start to see um, are signs that the pest is there. And this is the key one is honeydew droplets. So because they're having to eat so much of this phloem to get enough nitrogen to grow, they have to excrete all of that extra sugary material. And it, it manifests itself as small shiny droplets on leaves below where they're feeding because they feed on the undersides of leaves and on the stems. So if you see really shiny spots, sticky spots often on leaves, that's the first clue that you've got aphids. The second thing to look for is, it almost looks like your plant has dandruff. So it's these little white flecks. And if you were to get up closer and look at them, you would see that they're actually shed skins of those aphids. So they have to molt as they grow to each progressively larger stage in their life cycle. And those little white shed skins will often stick to the honeydew underneath the leaves. Um, so that's another great sign that you've got aphids. Generally, when we talk about pest management and crops, we think about cultural control, biological control, and chemical control. And some of the cultural control aspects, say within a greenhouse, are ensuring that your crop is healthy because pests often target struggling plants. But you also want to manage nitrogen. So, you know, a lot of people want to push their plants a little bit more, put a lot of nitrogen on it but it actually makes it a much better host for aphids. They tend to be attracted to plants that have a lot of nitrogen and reproduce better. In terms of chemical control, starting early is always the best bet. I often call uh, scouting the new is the new spraying. Often guys that are, or gals that are managing greenhouses, they've got 10 hours of work to do in, a, in an eight hour day um, and they let scouting fall to the wayside. So. Uh, you don't have time not to scout. The most important thing that growers need to know about managing aphids on cannabis is that um, they have exponential growth rates. In just a matter of four to six days, an aphid can 
fully mature to an adult, give birth to live young that are already pregnant. So sort of like Russian dolls. Um, and then they lay anywhere from one to five uh, live clones of themselves, female clones every day for about three to four weeks. So you can imagine that that could increase really rapidly. But even something that's not talked about as much as, as catching those aphids early is that aphids can also transmit diseases like viruses and viroids and other uh, plant pathogens. And those are gonna become more and more prominent over the next few years as we see more uh, cultivars and clones being shared amongst growers. So quarantining uh, new plant material as well as, as observing any quarantining, really any plant material that you bring in for a sufficient amount of time to note for pests as well as diseases uh, is critical. 